Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and in this video, we're going to be looking at risk management and business processes. So we're going to be looking at how you can do business and incorporate risk in an efficient way. So without further ado, um, let's get into the video. Angel, we're just going to be looking at what are the best practices to do. So we're going to be looking at um, business strategy and planning, um, new product and business development, product pricing, and finally, business performance measurements. So what do we mean? Well, let's say I start my business, so I'm going to evoke on a business adventure. Um, the first thing I want to do is when I'm looking at my overall strategy, you know, the, what's the big game plan? it's very important that I consider risk right from the beginning. So I'm gonna be asking myself questions like, which risk factors could block our objectives? So if you wanna do a certain business and there's a risk that could you know, absolutely destroy that objective, it could be you know, a new competitor coming up, a change in economic climate, I mean, there's so many different possible risks that could, um, that could prevent you from getting your objectives. So you wanna then ask yourself, how are we going to measure and track these risk factors? Um, so you're going to say, well, what, try and quantify them. How big are they? Um, how likely they are to happen? And then you want to ask yourself, how are we going to get rid of these risks? How are we going to mitigate them? Are we going to have um, set up some internal processes? Or are we going to get some insurance and do an external transfer? And you can see I'm trying to keep this very high level um, so that this can be applied to any business, uh, any business venture at all, whether it be a financial business, um, an industrial business, uh, a service business, whatever, all these businesses will have risk and th this is how you should deal with your risk. Um, you also want to ask what level of risk performance should corporate management expect? So the boss, what type of risk is he looking from his sales force or his workers? How much risk must they take in order to generate profits? And then finally, with regards to the strategy, you need to know who is responsible for managing and measuring risks involved. Is it the CEO or is it a dedicated position that we spoke about called the chief risk officer? So who is ultimately responsible for ensuring that uh, risk is considered in the strategy? Now, once we've done our overall strategy, um, we're now going to develop some products and we need to consider risk when developing a new uh, product and that is we need to ask ourselves what are the business assumptions so let's say we're going to be selling a certain product um, business will make assumptions the assumptions will be like well what is the demand for this product um, what are people expecting from the product what will the economic environment be you know with regards to interest rates inflation exchange rates, all these various assumptions that we're going to make um, when we develop a new product. We then need to know, well, what are our expectations for these assumptions? If you're in the import-export business and you need to make an, um, an assumption about the exchange rate, and if you get that wrong, that's going to be devastating to your profit line. So you also want to consider what are the trigger points? What are So if it's the exchange rate at what point do we raise the alarm and say, well, the exchange rate is now unfavorable to us, or at one point you say that the exchange rate is very favorable to us. So you want to have these trigger points on each of these assumptions, and then you want to know what will your reaction be. So if the exchange rate goes very much unfavorable to you, you might want to just stop business completely and just you know take your losses as they are instead of getting yourself in more trouble, or this other way around, you might increase um, production and you know chase even larger profit. And remember, this can apply to everything. If it's, a, if it's an, an annuity uh, that product that you're offering as an insurance business, um, interest rates, those are going to have a massive effect on uh, how much profit you make and stuff like that. And this has caused big issues in the British um, annuity business. So it's important to consider what your assumptions are, what you expect these assumptions to be, what are the, the trigger points, like what are the extreme values of these assumptions and how you want to react to them. Then what you want to do, and insurance companies do this very well, they even have something called the risk premium, but this needs to be applied to all businesses, whether it's selling cars or 
you know, plumbing or whatever it is, you need to price risk into your product. So you need to consider what are the expected losses. And this could be for a plumber. I mean, plumber going to do a job, uh, there could be a traffic jam, which means he's late and he misses out on that client or something like that. So you need to factor in your expected losses due to risks. You also need to calculate the cost of the economic capital that you're going to be using to uh, create like a risk absorption. This is more for financial services and insurance. But I guess you could also have it for other businesses as well. And then what you also want to include in the pro cost of your product is the, the cost of transferring the risk. You know, if you're buying insurance or something like that, you want to take that risk into consideration. And you want to price your product in such a way that you avoid adverse selection. Um, and I mean, a very raw example is, let's say we're coming to insurance and we're selling life insurance and we don't calculate all the risk involved in our product. And what I mean by that is we charge the same price for life insurance to everyone. People who are very sick or smokers or something like that, they're going to get the same price as someone who's healthy. That means all the sick and smoky people are going to buy your product and the healthy people are rather going to buy their product from another company that has price risk and will give them a better rate. And what this means is you're left with a book uh, where you expected a whole bunch of you know, healthy and sick people, you not just have sick people and it can be devastating to your business. That's adverse selection. And by pricing risk in your product, you can get rid of that. So what is the solution? The solution is to report on risk. It's, to, it's very important that the performance measurements should include risk. Uh, think of it, let's say you had a whole bunch of salesmen, a whole bunch of workers, and you told them to go generate money for the business. The one guy goes and, you know, he establishes networks and he works hard and he takes some of the company money and he makes more money and he comes with a good, you know, 50% return. Whereas you have the other employee who takes the money they're supposed to use to, I don't know, do whatever business activities. He goes through a roulette table, he puts it all on black and he wins. Should that employee be rewarded more even though he made more money for the company he took a much bigger risk and that's what we need to do is we need to include risk with your performance okay and it's stupid to have like a separate report that's like having a separate report for your profit um, sorry for your revenue and your expenses so if you're only focusing on the revenue you can easily increase revenue by boosting your expenses buying more and more stuff and even selling it at a discount um, your revenue will increase. Your expenses will also increase, but if you're just focusing on the revenue, uh, you can be you know, taking unnecessary expenses. It's only when you combine the revenue and the expenses together do you can, can you see the profit that the business has made, and the bigger the profit, the better, not necessarily the bigger the revenue. And that's the same when it comes to performance and risk. We must consider performance and risk together because it's very easy to increase my performance by increasing my risk and if that risk goes undetected then as an employee or as a worker for the company I have an incentive to take a very big risk and jeopardize the entire company. But now the big problem comes and that is it's very tricky to quantify risk. How do you put a number to risk? How do you calculate um, you know, the risk of doing business to the risk of the exchange rate changing? And all these various risks that all come around business, it's very, very difficult to do. And that's why we need you. As actuaries, I mean, traditionally we were involved in pricing insurance products and we were very back office, stuff like that. As uh, society has realized such a big um, importance of risk, it's given actuaries the opportunity to step up and get right into the heart of the corporate business and sit themselves right next to the CEO and reports on risk, measure risk, and quantify risk. And the companies that do this will be in a much better position than the companies that don't. So yeah, thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on risk management and business processes. Cheers.